So, yeah, it's it's been an interesting week. And interesting is a term I use very loose. Everything's, everything's interesting in the terms of may you live in interesting times, interesting these days. And I'm, I'm, I'm I for one, am a little yeah. bit tired of it. I'm, I'm, I'm too old. I am quite literally too old for this. Tootsie Fruitsie. We, I have, I have reached my maximum Danny Glover is what it is. I am too yeah. old for this. Tootsie Fruitsie. I really think David Bowie and or Prince were our universe's anchor beings. <laughs> What's that coming to go? And ever since they died, it's all just been slowly unraveling. I, I love how you, you, you focus things through the lens of Marvel Cinematic Universe. Culture in general, really. Yeah. Because I can also do Lost. They made a billion on that movie and counting. They, they, they've cracked a billion are we, are again. Are we surprised? I hope Marvel takes into account that with, with Deadpool and Wolverine, part of why this billion dollar movie made so much money is that a big element of the humor and, and the, the, the parody behind it is um, we are tired of this. Tootsie Fruitsie. Um. Like half of half of the movie is like Marvel. What the f are you doing? There's even a there, yeah. I'm not, spoilers. There's um there's a like a freaking thirty second monologue near the end that might have been Ryan Reynolds talking to the audience about the multiverse stuff, like directly yeah. to the freaking audience. <laughs> And I was excited for the multiverse stuff, and I still think it could be so cool. But they've done so little cool stuff yeah, with it. Like No gone. Way Home was cool. No Way Home was great. Deadpool, Deadpool Wolverine was cool. I'm curious to see what happens with Monica Rambeau. Mm -hmm. But like so far, the stuff they have, have done with it hasn't been as cool as it should be. I know this is a brief little bit of a tangent here, and I know we need to get the, the bit going, but... One thing you will know about those bits that at Marvel, it always seemed for ages and ages like Marvel had the shit planned out. They didn't. They would kind of just yeah. throw some shit at the end of the movie and be like, whoa, what are they going to do with that? And people over at Marvel are like, whoa, what the f*** are we going to do with this? That's why you know, I want to talk to you. The actual Infinity Gauntlet went on the opposite hand. Yeah. Of the one, like, you know. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's it's like 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 and it like, existed, but then he needed E tree to make it, and yeah. Don't the worry distance, about that. Don't worry about the it. distance between I want to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative, and then that bit at the end of the Hulk movie with Ross and Stark, and then Iron Man two, where Nick, where, where where Nick Fury's like, actually, I didn't want your nights, so F off. Um, just the distance between all that, Tootsie Fruitsie. and that's only between three movies. It was like miles. My main thing right now is I need Marvel fans anyway. to decide between stop giving us all these new characters and stop bringing back sequels and old characters because it's one or the other. Yeah, I could go on about this. I think I, I mainly I have another little side tangent about part of the problem right now is that unlike the and also give me back of, Scarlet Witch immediately. Unlike the earlier phases of Marvel, we didn't, we don't have anyone, we don't have anyone's personal story we're following right now. Like we were following um, Tony, we were following Steve, we were following, the, we don't have us, we don't have a main character that we're following. Through we don't all have this a thread. Anymore. Right. Yeah. So anyway, side stuff, let's get to incredibly stupid shit. And oh boy, the first one we get. To, let's get the intro going because the first one this week is incredibly stupid. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here. For, let's say what we like to call what the fuck or what the fuck is wrong with you? Um, I'm, I'm having trouble talking because. So everyone here has seen The Prince's Bride, yes? And everyone here is aware of the meme. They're aware of all internet traditions of, you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. 
So this first story isn't exactly about the story so much as it's about the story. It, you'll see. It, it, it's not so much about the... Uh, we're we're going to get a little meta on this one. Um, holy shit. Uh, let me give you the link to this. Now, part of this, you're going to look at this, you're going, do they not know? And you're also going to say, oh, they have to know. But then you're going to say, wait, but do they know? So, um, <clears throat> Gen Z are raw dogging flights for TikTok. What? But experts say it can cause thrombosis. Now, let's start right there. That's from this is from Oriana Rosa Royal. Um, Miss Royal, Mrs. Miss, Miss Royal, um, may I call you Oriana? You keep using that word. I do not think that word means what you think it means. Um, now, for many of you out there, um, you are already aware of what the term raw dogging means. Please don't Google yeah. it. Yeah. Or at least you not at work. You shouldn't be doing it on a plane. Don't, yeah, do not, should not be doing that. Do not Google raw dogging at work. I'm just going to tell you that that's, that's your little tip of the week. Don't do that. Um, let, let, let's read the story a bit here. Most people kill time on a plane by reading a book, watching a film, or even taking a nap. Now, this sounds like it's going a very terrible place. But for now, TikTok's latest trend is encouraging plane passengers to sit silently and stare ahead for hours on end, and, or as Gen Zers call it, raw dogging. They don't. They don't. That's not sit, sitting. Look, ma'am. Sitting silent and staring ahead is not raw dogging. I think you have been, I, I think you may have been misinformed here. Perhaps the interns are pranking you. Holy shit. Are they pranking you? Quote, just raw dogged a seven hour flight. One male traveler uh, posted on his personal best on TikTok. No headphones, no movie, no water. The power of my mind knows no bounds. That's not what that. But also why? Like, I understand not wanting to be staring at a screen for 18 hours a day, right? Like, I've started taking up little art projects and stuff to try and not be. But you could like, why? I'm, Tara, I'm going to steer you back to the fact That someone convinced this writer the term for condomless sex in actuality means staring straight ahead silently on a flight. I mean, are they thinking about condomless sex? <laughs> Listen to this. Listen to this. Quote, is raw dogging flights actually good for your brain? In a world we have constant demands on our attention, switching off and having a digital detox has its benefits. Quote, she talked to a PhD on this. Quote, not having access to emails or the ability to check in means we can create space to engage our minds in thinking about other activities or people. Sophie Mort, PhD, mental health expert at Headspace and clinical psychologist tells Fortune. You went to a shrink. No, I like, I swear to God, the interns are dying in the back room. They are rolling around. One of them I'm really can't concerned breathe. that we think that without technology, there's nothing to do. Are you aware of books? It's not. Tara, the substance I'm of this sorry, article the doesn't matter. The trend confuses me. What's wrong the with trend taking that, a nap? There is no trend. This doesn't exist. Someone fucked with her. To get someone fucked no, with this, this author. No, because people are posting other headlines in the chat. This isn't just this one. This isn't just this magazine. Tara, this is this is a rainbow party, Tara. That's what this is. OK, no, but I'm saying people are using this term in other publications. And I and I know and I'm what I'm saying is rainbow party. Do you remember when the Internet a while back convinced all of these these high public high high 
profile publications that what kids were doing was wearing different shades of lipstick and then going down on one guy, the rainbow party thing. And there was suddenly it was a no. moral panic. You didn't remember that? It was a moral panic about the rainbow party and all these, all these the websites. Yeah, the kitty. There you go. The kitty litter thing too. All of these websites are like, oh my god, what are we doing? The kids are having blowjobs with the colored lipstick. What the hell? And this is a this is a rainbow party, Tara. This is kids using kitty litter in school. This was done to fuck with the press. I also. Why do experts say it can cause thrombosis? Like we did a story way back in the day about Lady Gaga almost getting thrombosis because she wore caution tape on an airplane instead of clothes. I don't understand how disassociating will cause thrombosis. Everything about this confuses me. A complete lack of movement can come with risks of deep vein thrombosis, which is well, okay. But if you're reading, you're not moving either. Like so, that means being on a flight can cause thrombosis. Tara, we all knew that. One percent risk of thrombosis is a risk. Technically, they are technically correct, which is of course the most perfect type of correct. I hate this everything is, about this story. This is the, this is this is TikTok fucking with the mainstream media again. And it's 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 I love it. They got the mainstream media to put the term raw dogging in several fucking headlines, Tara. That's what happened here. They got Shay, son, have you read the have you read the head the websites today? They're talking about raw dogging. D do you raw dog? When you're flying, have you ever raw dogged, son? Because you know it's dangerous, the raw dogging. That's no what water, the website no food. says. You can't even have water. Listen, I know the world is a traumatic place, and it's okay to just say, I'm going to disassociate for a while. You don't got to make it a trend. They're lying, Tara. It's not a trend. They're lying. These are lies. They sit on a throne of lies. Don't get distracted. Come back. Come back to us, Tara. Don't go into the light. Come back to us. But I have it on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I hate oh. everything about this story. Well, you're going to hate the next one, too. Um... Every, everyone, oh my God, it doesn't take being Oregon woke and did. Not there's anything wrong with being woke, but it doesn't take that just to be basic, considerate of other human beings. It doesn't. Yeah. Just conceptual. I know this is going to blow a lot of minds out there, so sit your asses down, but I conceptualizing another person as a person is really fucking easy to do. Yeah. Which is why this this all sorts of red flags are going off about this one. Um, <sighs> Silicon Valley tech startup. Uh, Silicon Valley tech firm uh, apologizes. Yeah, for sexist stunt after backlash at industry event. Major Silicon Valley Silicon Valley tech firm Palo Alto Networks has issued an apology. Following a widespread, following widespread criticism for its controversial marketing stunt at an industry event in Las Vegas, the company faced backlash after images emerged showing female models. Those aren't mannequins; those are models dressed in tight outfits with lampshades covering their heads, used as human lampstands during a network event at the Black Hat conference. Now, already. If these were were mannequins, that would not be great if these were mannequins. OK, yeah. but the fact that these are human beings. 
The incident has reignited discussions about the persistent bro culture in Silicon Valley, a term used to describe the male domin- op- dominated, often mis- 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 misogynistic environment. Can't talk tonight. That has been subject to criticism for years. Olivia Rose, a cybersecurity advisor, condemned the event on LinkedIn, highlighting the ongoing challenges women face in the tech industry. She criticized the company for reducing women to mere props, noticing that some female employees felt too intimidated to voice their concerns about the decision. I have, there are lines I wait for, for, for years to use. And it's often, it's rare they get presented an opportunity to use them. But this is one of those. And Tara, Jackie Treehorn treats objects like women. Women. <laughs> I just, what was the is it a light based product no no like what uh, was even I don't I how don't did you where did this concept come from yeah I don't understand what are you what are you advertising here like were they like what if the layup from a Christmas story but a whole woman except your head because nobody likes that part <laughs> It's a major reward, Dara. <laughs> also, niche concern here, but did they give those women any sort of eye protection? Because having light blaring at your face for that long is going to fuck up your eyes. Yeah, probably. When I have a facial and my facialist does the blue light, she puts little yeah, things over my eyes. These, uh, yeah. In response to controversy, Palo Alto Networks has launched an internal investigation to determine how the decision was made and to ensure that similar mistakes are not repeated. You need an internal investigation for that. I can tell you how the decision was made, men. Apparently, we, we have to treat people like people. I, I don't understand. Really, We're going to have to look into this. Let, let's, let's, let's arrange a gold ribbon panel. To find out how this happened. And I listen, mean, there are is... literally dudes out there who are very pissed off that they have to treat women like people now. One of them is running for vice president. <laughs> yep. There's a lot of people that are very pissed off that they have to treat women uh, like human beings. We, sh- we should just couch that issue for now, Tara. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. We got another headline here. The dresses here. are just, tacky. They are. They are. They, those are not. Yeah, there's just no. All right, so we got another headline here where you read this and you're like, "Oh, they know what they were doing." Did they know what they were doing? Wait, no, they knew what they were doing. Hold on, did they? We're going to have to figure out if, if the author of this one, this is Sam Barron, if he knew what he was doing. This is from Franklin Township. Uh, Jersey? Apparently. Twenty-one-year-old East Orange man has been arrested and charged on Thursday. Man arrested for masturbating at Bridgewater Target. Did did he hit it? I used to work for at the Bridgewater Mall. You used to work at the Bridgewater Mall, yeah. No, but you're, you're looking at that masturbating at a target, eh? How many points did he score? <laughs> Is it, did he win at the stuffed doll or, you know, like a big stuffed animal? How or? far away was the target? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thursday, August 1st, 7.21 p.m., Jason Banks was seen exposing his genitals and gratifying himself in the toy aisle of the Target on Promenade Boulevard. A week later, uh, police located Banks and arrested him after conducting an interview. He was charged with lewdness and lodged in the Somerset County Jail pending a detention hearing. What in the fuck in the Target toy aisle made you suddenly have to make the bald man cry? Rats dolls. All right. Aside from the fact that those are like kids dolls, right? Their heads are like 90% of their body. 
That's weird. Men are disgusting. I look forward I mean, to your but, comments. I mean, but what, what happens in your head? When just the basic, like there are there are barriers, okay? There, there are, are are checks and balances. There are velvet ropes all over the place in our heads every day that stop us from doing some. Some it's more than that. Sometimes there's a big old bouncer in our brains before we're like, you know, hey, you know what? I'd like to drive on the sidewalk, and and something in your brain. No, no, no. We're not going to do that. No, that's the no stop. There's like crossing guard with the big old stop sign says, no, we're not doing this. Were they all on strike? Did, did something just happen? Like it did all the people like it's like inside out. Only there's like a team of people keeping your penis in your pants. Were they all like out to lunch or something? Was there an event? Was there something going around at the office? What stop? What was normally kept you from taking your dick out? What was not there that day? They were all exhausted from stopping him from doing it in the produce aisle at the Target. <sighs> they just ran out of steam. Like everybody, you will get a weird thought in your head sometimes, but that's a weird thought in your head. You'd be like, where did that come from? I'm not doing that shit. It's like that bit from uh, from uh, Make Some Noise on Dropout, which I, I hardly recommend Dropout. I love Dropout. Great series. So make Some Noise. It's, it's the devil on Zach's shoulder. And it's like, you should eat that egg, uh, uh, that, that deviled egg on the, windso on the, winds uh, uh, on the windowsill. You, you should totally eat that. Think about it. Why would someone leave a deviled egg on the windowsill if you weren't Why supposed to Why would someone it? leave a deviled egg on the windowsill? Right. You should totally Why is there eat a that. Deviled egg on the windowsill. Right, it's there to be there, right. So that would go. That's on. That's the kind of shit that goes through your head, and you're like, no, I'm not doing that. Why did I even think that? Brains are dumb. Also, though, here's what I don't understand, fellas. Yeah. Or I should be, you know, people with penises. Let's say. Yeah. Here's what yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. If you do a good job. Yeah. There's a mess at the end. <laughs> and if you're in the aisle at Target, what are you doing with it? Well, Tara, I'll put it, I'll put it this way. If you do it enough times, there's not a mess. But you gotta do it a lot. A lot, a lot. A lot. Like in one day, you gotta do it. It's like like it's like spitting dust at a certain point there. I just I don't even like what what was I doing the other day? Oh, I cut I cut sunflowers from the cat shelter work. I want to know in what, my yard. how how we got <laughs> from there to here. Come I, I must hear how these two connect. And in the process of cutting sunflowers, the, the gunk inside the stem got all over my hands and I right. had errands to run. OK, I'm, I'm following I you like, now. I like scoured my car for hand sanitizer because I didn't want to have to deal with my hands feeling like that for any longer than necessary. And now it's just sunflower goop. I that think didn't we're learning his body. We're learning terrible things about sunflowers today. <sighs> Oh, plants like if you rip the stem they all have gunk in them that's what makes them grow I, I think there's more than just the gunk involved but well, whatever they need the gunk <sighs> but that gunk didn't come out of anybody's balls and I no, still it wanted not. it off of me they did not all right let's so uh, let's jerking off in the target and then just continuing shopping <sighs> bad people all right let's move on Oh, boy, this is San Francisco. Everyone's getting fired here. That's the first thing. Everyone who actually has a job involved with this story is getting fired. 
Probably, you know what? Even the I, the guy who stole it did a bad job on this too. In fact, so we often say quite a bit. I should get a tattoo that says "Meth is a bad drug." <laughs> and we're learning another reason this week that meth is a bad drug, and that is it makes you bad at capitalism. Is that a bad thing? Well, in this case, man charged with burglarizing FBI truck in San Francisco, trading the stolen gear for $20 bag of meth. Oh, yeah, you could have gotten more than that. Right. A man who allegedly stole thousands of dollars of gear from an FBI truck may not have realized the value of the equipment. As his charging documents say, he stole a $1,500 ballistic vest from that hall for $20 bag of meth. The Bear Area News Group. It's a report today of a man charged with stealing thousands of dollars worth of equipment from an FBI van. Alvarez, uh, Gregory Acosta Alvarez is accused of stealing dozens of flashbang grenades, a gas launching gun, surveillance equipment, and a ballistic vest. Why would you even want to do drugs? You could be Batman. <laughs> That's like the Batman starter set right there. You don't even have to be a billionaire. Yeah, but, he's on so many, but he's on so many drugs that didn't occur to him. <laughs> exactly. It's a bad drug. There you go. Acosta Alvarez reportedly arrested the same day with most of the equipment being recovered at his nearby hotel room, but the ballistic vest and gas launching gun were not recovered. That's because, according to the news group, Acosta Alvarez allegedly claimed he traded them to someone for $20 worth of meth. Uh, the alleged theft occurred... Uh, at uh, Coma Street between 5th and 6th Streets, FBI Special Agent Welton Pollard had parked the vehicle there. It's a video That's a reportedly. Name. Yeah, Welton Pollard. That's. I'm sorry. Of, of the New Hampshire Pollards. Welton. <laughs> <laughs> reportedly caught Acosta Alvarez bringing the car and stealing from the van and riding away on his bicycle. I love that. He's on a bike. He's got a fucking ballistic vest and a gas launching gun and flashbacks. He's like down market Batman at this point. He's like, he's like, he's like Batman, but you bought him on Wish. Um, he's Lego Batman. He's Lego Batman. FBI agents were able to locate uh, Acosta Alvarez hotel room, approximating approximately a quarter mile from the scene of the truck that of the truck theft. They found a defibrillator. That had been stolen from the truck, along with grenades and some of the surveillance equipment. Let's invest in the gas gun at Armin Hawk for meth, allegedly. So, everybody who was involved in this. Yeah, time. time okay, time. Second. Okay, all right, let's go. Let's go. You see this Bring guy it. taking off on a bike yeah. with your shit. Yeah. You still have the van. You do. No, they caught him on, well, they caught him on so surveillance long. video. And it takes you so long to catch up with him that he has time to fence your shit. Well, they caught him on surveillance video. That's how they found followed oh. him on the bike and whatnot. So well, that okay, means they weren't there. No, they weren't there. They just left all this shit parked on the street, busted in the. Va You're all fired. You are bad. Yeah. You are bad at FBI. But also, you could have made them give you so much more meth. Oh, my God. So much more meth. Like, you're, you're, you're bad. It makes you bad at negotiating. Yeah. You're coming. You see, when you have a gas launching gun and smoke grenades, you're approaching the transaction from a position of strength. Yes. Like I, a cocaine it's, it's, addict would never. <laughs> Don't want to well, see. That's, that's practically most of Wall Street, honestly. So. Yeah, exactly. And that much stuff would probably get you half a dose of cocaine because cocaine is yeah, way more expensive. Oh yeah. God only knows why. You know? It seems like cocaine's a lot easier to make than meth. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, but look at all the people who we see fucking up transporting it. It's true. That is true. It's harder mm. to traffic. Well, we have another one here. To, let's see. Where did this one come from? Massachusetts. 
Um, quite often we have criminals on this show who fail to comprehend some of the basic elements of the crime they're committing. This dude failed. Well, when we get to the end, you'll see this dude failed a large one. Um, kind of completely missed the point. Like if if you had if the point had missed you any further, it would be a goddamn low orbit. It would be bumping into the fucking Starlink satellites. That's how far you missed the point here. Man arrested after crashing car into fence. Well, that sounds pretty mundane. Let's go. Oh, how? Oh, God damn it. How do I say that? What is that name? This is this was made. John. John Bulafan. Am I saying that right? That Bulafan? Is, I guess. Bulafan. John Bulafan. You did this to me on purpose. You did this to me on purpose. Man is facing charges after authorities say he crashed his car into a metal fence and sign while leading police officers on a chase Friday. John Baulafan, I think I said that right, of uh, Pepperell, was charged with multiple counts, including failure to stop for police, driving without a license, and a reckless driving following the incident that started shortly before 6.30 p.m. According to authorities, a Chelmsford police officer spotted a 2011 Honda Accord traveling on Riverneck Road and, after running a check on the vehicle, realizing the license plates attached to the Honda belonged to a 2006 Toyota, Se uh, Toyota Sienna. The officer attempted to stop the vehicle, but the driver fled. Officers attempted to catch up and stop the Honda's driver, that are identified as Baulafan, but uh, realized the car had spun wildly and crashed into a metal fence in St. Joseph's Cemetery. Oh, you're in for all sorts of trouble there. Um, pursuit considered continued when Baulafan turned onto another Interstate 495 on ramp. According to police, Baulafan then drove the car across the, be uh, the grassy median and knocked down a sign. Now, here's where we get to, as they say, the punchline. Authorities called off the pursuit and later tracked the Honda's license plate to a home in Pepperell where they located Bulafan and the damaged car. So you went home. You not just you went home, you stole a car, right? And you put you swapped the license on the stolen car, but the license you put on the stolen car was yours. That yeah. had your name and your address on it. I don't think you quite appreciate why you swapped the plates. Yeah, that's it's not just it. That doesn't be like, well, now this car is mine because I put my plates on it. No, that's no. not. It's not like branding. Not how that works. It's not, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, they'll never find me. That's right. They'll never look at plates like, yay, Lady Minchow. They, why would they? Why would they? It's so stupid. It's genius. They'll never it's figure. Not, no. This guy. It just up. came all the way. You know, it might have been so stupid it was genius had you not gone home. Yes. If you led them to your home but didn't go there. I just love this guy did a full on Benny Hill all over the fucking place in a car with swapped license and plates. You hit so many things and it was a so fucking Honda. Things. Those are not hard to drive. It's not like you stole a Hummer and weren't used to driving something that big. You stole a Honda Accord. Those are the Honda like, Accord. That's not a hard car to drive. What happened here? They'll never fucking find me. I swapped the plates. This seems like I swear to God, this seems like something from a fucking sitcom. Right? Yeah. It's like, no, they'll never find it. It's and like again, something Kramer would do in goddamn that... Seinfeld. And again, we have to remind you that there is no home base in real life. No, there is not. There is and no safe. Nope. That does not how me. that works. Nope. They can always get you. They can always get you. Our last one tonight comes from Yellowstone National Park. Oh, God. Who did what to an animal? 
no, no animals that were involved. No okay. animals were harmed in the making of this stupidity. Because people do stupid shit to the animals at Yellowstone. I kind of love this guy a little. Did you ever watch Parks and Rec? Yeah. You know, Andy. And I forget, someone yeah. on the channel might know this guy's name. Andy made up an FBI Burt Macklin, FBI. Burt Macklin, yes. Andy invented Burt Macklin. And that was his bit. And you're like, that's so silly. No one would do that. Well, you've obviously never watched this show before. So <laughs> let's 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 go through this one. Man accused of stealing vehicle of Yellowstone National Vehicle while intoxicated. Virginia man is under federal charges after allegedly stealing a Yellowstone National Park truck near Old Faithful while intoxicated. According to documents, uh, Alan Bowling of Virginia attempted to buy beer at the Old Faithful Upper General Store. Court documents say Bowling's credit cards were declined, prompting him to leave the store and get into a Yellowstone Park service station heavy wrecker. Like you do. Okay. Who among us has not, right? That's that's just who among us. But wait. The heavy wrecker reported as being seen near the Old Faithful Lodge before going the wrong way on a one-way road, driving off the roadway, and then coming to rest near the post office and ranger station. Bowling was pursued on foot by rangers, eventually stopped and detained at gunpoint. According to court documents, when asked to identify himself, Bowling said, quote, Nathan Patterson, undisclosed United States Marshal. He allegedly okay. told Raider, Rangers, I needed the truck to get to the United States Marshal's headquarters. <laughs> and so the fuck is Andy? And so the fuck is Andy from Parks and Rec? And the next question was logically, what is the address of the United States <laughs> Marshal headquarters? I need to get to the Marshall headquarters that's, place. That's that's classified. <laughs> classified. Oh, court documents say bowling smelled strongly of alcohol. Was taken to the Mammoth Jail after being identified by witnesses. He reportedly refused to participate in sobriety testing. Would not provide a breath sample and refused to comply with the blood warrant. Follow-up investigation, investigation found the heavy wrecker had come to stop 183 feet from the roadway, driving through and damaging a large wooden fence that is property of the federal government. You done fucked up. Now, some of you are out there going, it's just a wooden fence. The minute you, did, you get destruction of federal property, yep. that... Everything is escalated all the way up. It goes That's up to 11. That's why you don't fuck with mailboxes. Yeah. DUI, destruction of federal property and disorderly conduct, nine charges. <laughs> Can we also talk about the fact that blood warrant sounds so much more metal than it probably is? Yeah, yeah, blood warrant. Like that sounds like the name of a death metal band and really they're probably sending a nurse in with a syringe. Exactly, yeah. Not to say that nurses aren't metal. Nurses are metal as fuck. I'm just saying you hear blood warrant. I love this guy that he had an entire persona ready while drunk. Like you have to wonder, did he have a character sheet in his pocket? That's like, have you ever thought about just like be in your LARP character for a while? <laughs> Did he try to resolve the situation with rock, paper, scissors? Like, come or on, conversely, son. Like, the, the game I've always wanted to run is just you build yourself as a character sheet and get tossed in a LARP and see, like, what kind of vampire you wind up or maybe you wind up something else or, like, what happens to you? But it has to be like you. I wouldn't even know what to put down for my skills. I have like nothing practical. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> well, then, you know, in a vampire game, if you have nothing practical, you're kind of lunch. So that's how that works. Um, or Sabat. 
Well, that's sorry for that's, for shovel heads. That's that's leftovers after lunch. <laughs> lunch is still involved there, but anyway, I just or, I love that he. <laughs> I love that he just had a whole thing set up. He had a name. Yeah. What does undisclosed United States Marshal mean? What does that even mean? What is undisclosed? Because you're the very fact of telling them you are, in fact, disclosing it. That's what the word right. means. Exactly. You have disclosed. Did you mean undercover? Because I think, I think that was going to be why he would say like, well, where's your badge? Oh, I, I don't have it. I'm, I'm guessing he was setting up for that. Undisclosed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, Gal. So, oh, that's the news for this week. What did we learn this week? We've learned that rehearsing your persona is not going to get you out of the arrest. Very good for staying in character. Got to think about the details. Good for staying in character, I guess. But, you know, it's it's nice for an improv troupe. Not so much for crashing through but federal property. Never LARP with the cops. Never LARP with the cops. They're not they're not they're not there to they're, they're not NPCs. That's not how that works. No. We have learned that. um <laughs> If you don't understand why the crime works and how the crime works, don't do the crime. You may, in fact, need to watch a few YouTube videos to understand the crime before you attempt the crime. We get too many people that forget that they're supposed to want to get away. Yeah, right. It's. We have learned there are a whole bunch of unemployed FBI agents in San Francisco tonight. And one guy, one guy who almost realized his destiny, he could have been a whole new superhero. <laughs> and he traded it all for a $20 bag of meth. Meth is a bad drug. But you know what? I think that's a good thing. Because do you want meth man walking the streets? I don't. We kind I don't of want to do have him. up on mess with a gas gun walking the streets. Sure. That's this show. That. This show is the chronicles of meth man. That's what we do. Yeah. We have learned that if all the little alarm bells in your head are ringing saying, don't pull out your penis, don't pull out your penis. You know, I don't even wait for the alarm bells. In general, don't right. pull out your penis. There are certain specific instances where that's acceptable, but typically we have rooms made for those with a little In like ninety percent of scenarios. Yeah. Don't pull out your penis. We have learned that if you are challenging the humanity of another entire set of people, a corporate investigation is not going to figure out why that decision was made. You're just a terrible person. You really need an army of therapists more than anything else. And finally, we've learned that TikTok can convince any journalist to put anything in a headline with a straight face. They're all Ron Burgundy. 